Uh, I'm joined here this morning by Professor Andrew Kurtz, who's the Chair of the uh, Department of General Anesthesiology at the Cleveland Clinic. Uh, thanks for joining us, Professor Kurtz. Morning. Uh, I've just enjoyed your uh, opening plenary session, uh, the Ellis Gillespie Lecture. Uh, could you give us a brief summary of some of the topics that you discussed um, during this session? Okay. Yeah, I was asked to talk about evidence-based medicine in the perioperative area. And I think I mainly, I didn't want to present very specific studies and give, basically give my opinion whether we, have in, whether we have evidence for this or that, but more look at the global field of evidence-based medicine, how we um, in general accrue the evidence we need, so how we do the research and what are the older concepts or the, or the most the most common concepts such as randomized controlled trials but also what do we what we might have to consider in the future such as, as big data and how we deal with all that so that's basically the first part in regards to evidence based medicine to get the evidence then uh, of course there is to implement the evidence which is just as hard as uh, uh, the first part and there I guess it's really most important that we learn to use evidence properly and combine it with our clinical knowledge and the most important part there I think is to train our young people to to the point where they can actually read papers and where they can judge papers so where they then can make the decision whether something is evidence-based or not. And the last part is then just to evaluate whether what we've implemented as evidence is really done or not and how the field changes with that. But I think it fits perfectly into this thought of of thinking bigger because it's such a broad, broad topic. Um, it, it, it's almost difficult to, to get it under, uh, under one title. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, what do you see are the barriers to applying an evidence-based model um, to research a perioperative, perioperative medicine? I think the main barrier is that we don't have a sufficient number of large trials. It's, um, as I said in the lecture, we have many, many, many studies which are all underpowered or many, many underpowered and thus to a certain extent meaningless and people aren't taking them seriously enough to then apply it in their patients. The second part is the implementation and there the main barrier is actually us. We ourselves, I think the medical society is very very reluctant to think about new things, to apply new things. So and, and part of evidence-based medicine, I said before there are three parts, it's the patient, it's the evidence, the research and it's our clinical judgment. And in the two biggest areas, the research as well as our clinical judgment and how we deal with it, we have deficiencies. Yeah, absolutely. Um, mortality is a rare and, and fairly blunt endpoint. What do you see are the most important end endpoints to be studying in perioperative medicine research? Yeah, you're absolutely correct. But I think mortality is an easy to, or probably the easiest to study endpoint, but it's not the good end point for anesthesia interventions. Um, I think, I would still think we need to look at long-term end points and long-term outcomes. And one of the most important ones for me is uh, how patients function after surgery and uh, disability. So, so I, I think if we can show, let's say, that with some perioperative intervention, we decrease perioperative inflammation and therefore patients have less post-operative fatigue, they go to work faster, or they even, they avoid disability and things like that. I think 
that that has the most impact on the healthcare systems and society. Other outcomes, of course, we are interested in interventions that affect wound infections or uh, post-operative cognitive dysfunctions and things like that. Uh, many of these outcomes are hard to study, uh, but I think whether you function well after surgery is probably the most important thing. There's perhaps a reluctance amongst some of us to move out of the operating theatre and embrace that true perioperative physician role. Um, do you think this is something we really need to all embrace um, or uh, is perioperative medicine going to become a subspecialty of, of its own? I actually think we all should embrace that. Um, times over the last 30 years we've seen an enormous change in anesthesia. I mean perioperative or intraoperative mortality has almost disappeared. Anesthesia I think is fairly safe at this point in time. Of course we can do tons of things intraoperatively to make it even better but where I think we drop the ball is, and all of us do, is when the patient leaves the operating room or the recovery room. I think partially this has to do with the super specialization of surgical fields. So surgeons are very, very specialized now and they care about what happens in the OR, but not so much anymore, I, I feel, see the patient in its whole, with its entire, in its entire picture. And I just believe that the anesthesiologist is, is, is the perfect person to actually take over here. And I think despite, we've shown that many, many things intraoperatively affect outcome. Um, but probably what affects outcome in the post-operative period is much, much larger and much, much more important. So I actually feel very, very strongly that that's an area we have to take over. Professor Kurtz, thanks very much for your time this morning. You're very welcome. Yeah.